use headphones for best experience. to show you that uh, there are new content on uh, audio streaming platforms such as Spotify or um, Apple Music or other platforms and the latest release, 3 hours closed Railways Ramble, Deep Voice ASMR is actually content that is not on YouTube so it's um, recorded in audio only so check it out if you want to listen to my content audio only. Today I'd like to make a video about this old machine that I found on a flea market this summer at Erland actually. Um, place where, where the uh, album I just showed you was, uh, was about. Erland, an island in Sweden. Um, I was there with a friend this summer and found this machine and I had no idea what it was, but I bought it. And it turned out to be um, an old uh, pinwheel calculator. And there were actually a lot of information when I searched for for this. So now I know a bit more about these types of machines. This brand is Svesia, and uh, that bra uh, brand I haven't found so much information about, but I think it's just a name under which this model was marked in uh, Sweden and I think it's a German uh, design or model and it's very much based on the most famous model called uh, original Odner and uh, the original Odner machine was um, invented or designed by uh, uh, Wilgott Theophil Odner in the 1870s. Uh, he was based in Russia, St. Petersburg, but he was actually Swedish. And um, he, when he died, uh, his family took uh, over the company and eventually they moved back to Sweden. Uh, 1917, I think, uh, during the Russian Revolution. But anyway, um, this m model looks a, a lot like the original Odner, um, and uh, uh, in 1892, I think, uh, Odner got the um, patent, US patent, and I guess this one could be from early 1900s, this model, um, and these were popular uh, tools uh, from like 18, yeah, late 1800s to 1960s, I guess. Maybe until 1970s, 
because it was in the 1970s when the when the when the electronical uh, calculator became popular and in the 1960s there were the first electronic calculators but those were big um, so in the 1960s I guess these were still produced not exactly this model but uh, these functions that you can use manually without electricity. So this part is the input input register or input wheels. It's called pinwheel calculator. It's because of this. it can calculate addition multiplication with a plus sign here and it's an arrow upwards and here's an arrow downwards where it says sub and div so subtraction and division so you can calculate all the four types of operations addition multiplication subtraction and division using this machine and uh, this part is called uh, the counter register with eight digits by the way this is uh, ten digits you can set here Sorry, nine. So it's uh, room for nine digits, and it's of course nine steps. So from zero to nine. Yeah, here it's ten, of course. I just mixed that up in my head. Ten positions, nine room for nine digits, and here is thirteen room for thirteen digits. It's the accumulator or the main register where you usually get your answer if you're, for example, adding or subtracting or doing a multiplication. By the way. I wanted to show you a website I found about this, uh, John Wolf's web museum. Um, and here actually there's a link to an Ordner Arithmometer Simulator. And uh, I will put a link to this website in the description so you can actually try to use um, a machine like this. about tutorials or demonstrations of some youtubers trying different um, types of uh, pinwheel calculators so it's been a lot of help I can put some links to those as well but now let's start with some calculations and I was thinking for quite a while what I wanted to calculate video, something that could be fun to, to, as a demonstration, um, and I actually found something uh, yesterday, or if it was two days ago, uh, I want to calculate a distance, and I want to calculate the distance between a place in the southern parts, very, very southern parts of Brazil, uh, just at the border to Uruguay, Uruguay, on a, a small peninsula here. Uh, 
from the south of Rio Grande do Sul. It's called Shui, this place. This is a small village. I think it's quite a small village. And from this point, I want to calculate the distance to a point here in northwestern Brazil called the Parque Nat uh, Nacional do Monte Roraima. Mount Roraima National Park. It's uh, the northernmost point, I think, in Brazil. So then I have looked up coordinates for these two places. I will need to do some notes here while I'm calculating. I hope you can see what I'm writing. Should we? This place has the coordinates 33 degrees south of the equator. Zero is the equator, so 33 degrees 41 minutes 28 seconds south. The degrees, the um, coordinates of the world, the like the unit, how it's uh, measured, is in, in uh, it's like angles or grades, or I'm not sure you can call it angles, but yeah, it's, uh, the earth is divided into 360 degrees, and it's a zero somewhere and uh, yeah you can go in either direction to plus 180 or minus 180 and it's both the parallels and the longitude uh, directions um, this is east or west and this is south or north of the equator this is east or west of Greenwich that goes through a place very close to London. So, yeah, the America is on the western hemisphere in that in this system, and Asia is on the eastern hemisphere, and most of Europe also on the eastern. the coordinates for um, Park Nacional do Monte Roraima is five degrees. It's north of the equator, and in longitude it's uh, 60 degrees, 36 minutes and 50 seconds west. So I want to start to calculate the distance 
in degrees, minutes and seconds, because these are not based on 10 decimals, it's based on 60. So I need to calculate them individually first, and then I will make calculator a decimal number from the from the result. So I need to calculate yeah uh, since it's south here it's actually minus value. North is the plus value. West is the minus value. East um, here is also the minus value. So my first calculation will be minus 33 minus 5. Then I will do minus 41 minus 9. Yeah, since minus is because it's a distance. I want to have minus, but then these are positive numbers. So. And then minus 21, 8 minus 40. And after this, you will see how to make addition and uh, subtraction on this machine. First I clear, because you see it's a number here, I clear so that it will be zero everywhere. Then I will shift this carriage to the, to the very le uh, left. I hope you can see that it's a number here, it says 1, position 1, uh, here is position 2, and it continues to position 8. These are for pointing out decimals. So, we'll start from the right. And uh, I want to have minus thirty three. Then I rotate this crank in okay, hmm. I have to start with a negative number. Maybe I should show you just a positive addition to start with. Let's take 13 plus 15. 1, I put these to 1 and these to 3, the tens and the zeros and yeah, the, the integers, the first 1 to 9 integers is here, and then the tens is here, so 1, 3. I turn the crank, um, what is it called? You rotate it um, clockwise for addition, and you can see it transferred to the main register here, so it says 30. The counter says 1, because we have done one calculation so far. And uh, I'm, I let this be at 1, because the next the next uh, number will be 1515, and I add, and the result is 28. We have made two operations. I clear this one now. We can start with 28, if we 
start with 28 and we will do a subtraction. Let's subtract 23 from 28. Then I turn the, the crank anti-clockwise. Uh, it's a red digit here, showing that we have done a subtraction. So it's going in the other direction to negative numbers. Um, yeah, it just means uh, that we subtracted instead of add. The result is 5. If I continue to subtract 23 from 5, you can see what happens. Uh, crosses zero, so it overflows or underflows, um, and you don't see the negative number. This is the this is a very large number, but actually you can see the negative number. This is like the complement number of the negative number, the result. So if we want to see the what the negative number is, I can take the sum of these, I put them back here, 2, 8, 9, 9, but I don't do all, the, all these nines because it's actually good if we still have some of those, and I turn the crank anti uh, counterclockwise um, it should be zero now so I'm a bit confused let's start all over Also, when it overflows or underflows, you hear the bell rings. Now it says 9999972. I take 72 back here to the input and the two nines as well. I go counterclockwise. I go counterclockwise now and get zero. And I do one more crank counterclockwise and get the positive number 28. And that's uh, the negative. If I put a minus sign here, it's and I don't read all these nines and the eight there. You can see. I had two nines and that those became zeros here, so it starts here. Minus 28 was the result. Now it's all cleared. And um, let's start with the actual calculation here. 33. Minus 33 I want to have. So from 0 I turn this counterclockwise. This number should represent minus 33. And um, I take minus 5 from this counterclockwise. get this number here and I want to see what negative number this is so 2 8 
two, six, two, six, nine, nine, etc. And one counterclockwise. You can see it's zero now. And another counterclockwise turn. And it's shown here, 38. So minus 38 was our first calculation. And I will do this as well. Um, it's a bit tricky to do this uh, negative number thing, so I will just skip the minus here and do like this 41 plus 9 and 28 plus 40 it's because it doesn't matter actually because it's distance and the distance I'm, I want to measure distance so even though it's negative um, coordinates it doesn't matter because the distance is always positive. There's nothing like a, a negative distance. So it will be the same result. I can skip this uh, minus sign also in front of 38. same with the coordinates for um, this is the coordinates for the distance I mean the distance measured in degrees minutes and seconds the next step will be to turn this into a decimal number that I can use in later calculations. So it's uh, 38 plus 50 uh, 50 over 60 plus 68 over 3600 because this is the number of minutes in a, in a degree and this is the number of seconds in a degree so I have to do these two calculations now and I need to show you how to do division oh sorry I have forgotten the the western coordinates or the, the longitude coordinates. Of course I have to do the same here. Uh, 53 minus 60, 
27 minus 36 and 24 minus 50. Um, oh wait, minus 53 minus minus 60. Okay, now I have to keep in mind the minus signs. I still have to do it for some time. Minus 53 minus minus 60 is minus 53 plus 60. Um, minus 27 minus minus 36 is minus 27 plus 36. And uh, minus 24 minus minus 50 is minus 24 plus 50. Um, I wonder if I should... Yeah, I can start with negative numbers here. I think it's... It would make it more clear. First, I subtract 53 from 0. I get this number. And then I add 60. And it uh, went over the 0 again, and here is 7. Plus 50. So counterclockwise or 0 minus 24. And uh, this is the um, complement number of the actual negative number. And I don't need to know the negative number. This point because I can continue to calculate and I was supposed to add 50 to this negative number and I turn the crank clockwise for addition and you can see it goes back to positive number doesn't matter that we were in the negative number world for a while. It's now 26. The uh, degrees, the minutes and the seconds. Just like here, 7 plus 9 over 60 plus 26 over 3600. So here are two more divisions. I need to do these four divisions are the next step. Here you can 
privacy, the digit, the room for a number here, uh, to the very, as, as far to the um, left as you can, corresponds to the number 6 here. Because when you do division, it's the opposite. You want to start at the at the left and continue towards the right. So I want to start as far to the left here as well. But this is the since this is the since I'm all the way to the left here, I cannot go to this three because here it stops at uh, this um, main register stops here now so I only have six uh, room for six numbers I can't have more than if it's a if it would be a decimal point here for example after the first digit I only will be able to calculate one two three four five decimals after that The first number was 50, 5, and I leave this for 0, I add it, so it will transfer to the main register, no, wait, I go back, subtract it again, so we're back to 0, actually, you noticed I, I started at position 5 when I should have started at position 6. I could actually start at position 5, but then I have room for, for even less uh, decimals. And you never know when you do division how many decimals you will have. <laughs> Sometimes you know, perhaps, but... Quite often you get a lot of decimals. Uh, so 5, 0 on position 6 and 5. And the method I'm going to use now is the same as when you do long division by hand. You will get the same numbers here as you will get there before you get to the result, the re remainder. I will show you. First, uh, this counter that uh, I haven't used so much yet, more than count the number of calculations made so far, is very important in division because that's where you will see the result. Uh, this is where you will set the divisor, what are they called, the dividend, that's what I just done, the dividend is 50. And it's also where I will set the divisor, the number under the, the line, which is 60. Now it's set to 60, as you can see, 6 here. And this model doesn't have a display here where you can see. I've seen that there were um, a lot of later models of pinwheel calculators had a extra display here so you could see actually what number you had set in the setting register that would be quite nice so I have to clear this uh, counter because that because this one should not count there should only be a red digits here because uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do subtractions over and over again. And that was, it took me a while before I, I really got how to do the divisions. It was the hardest part to learn, I think, how it worked on this machine. Uh, but it's actually repeated subtractions that you're doing. And I had never thought about division in that way before. It's the same as uh, repeated subtraction, but it's like when you when you 
give cards, for example, in a, if you are four person that can play some card game, um, and you have 52 cards, you start to give one a card each, that's like the first step, okay, now everyone has one card, but I still have cards in the deck, so I will continue. Now you have all have two cards, and I will continue until I have less than four cards here. Um, so what I I did was uh, I subtracted uh, fifty was my fifty two was my um, my starting point, my dividend, and four was my uh, divisor. I had to distribute it to four groups. So how many times can I subtract four from my deck of cards uh, before it's uh, before I'm out of cards? Uh, and the result is the quotient. That's what you want to calculate. And it will be visible here. How many how many times can I do this? How many times can I subtract 60 from 50? And of course, um, I can't do it even one time, so it will be a decimal number, 0 point something. And that reminds me that I need to think, give a little thought to the decimals here. 50 is a decimal point, and uh, the decimal point I have to imagine here, it's here, after 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4 decimals here, and here it's actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And the result that will show up here will have 11 minus 4 digits, or I mean decimals. 11 minus 4, 10, 9, 8, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I start to subtract, uh, subtract 6, 60 from 50. Uh, and I'll show you what will happen. It says the bell rings, and it means that I overflowed, or under, I mean underflowed 0, and it's starting to get to all these 9s here, but since I'm already at the, the very left here, you only see one nine. So I couldn't even subtract one. Here it says I have subtracted one, but I couldn't do that. So I have to go back and redo this, and do this by adding the same amount again. And you will hear the bell again, a bit annoying. And instead I will just skip this first position and I will continue um, shift it to the left so I will continue now in the second digit in position 7 and this is the remainder and now I have I had 50 yeah and I transfer a zero from here to here or something. Now I'm not really sure what I'm, how, I, how, I, how I should think about this, but it's just like a long division. Um, actually, so I did 50, how many times can 60 fit in 50? So now it should be how many times can 60 fit in 500 
like this. So I will start now. But this time I will not let the the turns uh, go through zero again, because there is a way to just keep uh, to keep track on this number here, five hundred. So I will keep track, because there will be at one point when it will become um, number below sixty, and that's what I want. There will be only one. Yeah, the first time it gets below sixty. The divisor. Then I will stop, because I then I know that next time I if I do one more turn it will cross zero and I will have to go back one step. And it's not necessary to get all these nines and to hear that bend all the time. So let's do some repeated subtractions. I'm going to subtract sixty from five hundred. A couple of times, and uh, when I think I can't do it anymore, I will see how many times I did it here on the register counter register. Six times and it's now 140. I can still do another rotation here. Seven times and it's 80. I can still go on. Eight times and it's 20. So now it's less than 60. If I do one more time, it will be a negative number and I have to to repeat and uh, do the, I have to undo the um, rotation with adding the same number. So I will not do that. I will stop here and just say that it will start with 0 0.8 and I will go to the next uh, decimal. Now I'm at position 6 and um, I had 20 before, now I add a 0 from here, so now I have 200, let's see, this is, the remainder is 20, and then now I add a 0 because I have shifted, so how many times can I subtract 60 from 200? Let's see, and uh, do some repeated subtraction. already 80. It's uh, 20 and I will stop. I will shift to position 6. The remainder was 20. Now I have, when I was, when I shifted I also at the same time added a 0 here. So now I will count the number of times I will subtract 60 from 200 again. And of course, is it 83 again? Shift. And uh, the remainder 20 became 200. again so you can see the pattern here the result is 0 0.8333 and if I would continue it would be 33333 three, 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 three. Um, let me just show you what happens if I if I forgot that 20 is less than 60 and I would do another turn yeah you will get this negative number You can read it as 100,000 minus 99,996, which so is minus 4. But I don't want to have that, so I add. It's still set on 60. So 
so I add 60 and this is the number I want and if we even if the division would go like be um, if it would be no remainder it would be a zero here and then you would know that the division is finished So here it's 0 0.8333 and let's clear everything. Go back to starting position for division and do the next one. 68 over 3600 or 68 divided by 3600 and I want to start as far to the left as I can so 60 8 is now put here to the main register and it's the dividend I clear the counter because I don't want it to count the first addition. It was 0 plus 68, just to get the, the dividend at the right place. Now I will subtract by 3600. Zero, zero. I have two decimal places, room for two decimals here. Here it's still a, uh, 11, like last time, 11 minus 2 is 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, Unfortunately, I cannot see, I cannot put this one step more to the left, so I made this temporary one, point zero, and put it here, just so I will remember that it's even one step more. It's actually nine decimals on this uh, quotient that I will see here. Yeah, 3,600, if I will subtract that from 68, I can't do it, it will be zero. No need to try. Or is it? Maybe I'm doing something wrong now, because I think it's possible. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I should think in another way. Uh, last time it was uh, two numbers with the same amount of digits, two digit numbers it was. Now it's one two digit number and one four digit number. So I have to turn this into a four digit number, I think. Uh, or I have to treat it, it's still 68. I have to treat it, uh, the first four numbers, in one, in the first step. Um, first, I'll undo 
do what I just did. Huh. I will clear everything. Thousand six hundred. Mm. No, of course, I I was not thinking wrong because um, I can just if I can continue to consider this as a number three thousand six hundred. I I see that I can't subtract it from this. Number, so I will shift the first thing I do. Now I have 680. I still can't subtract the number from 680. Now it's uh, on position 6 and uh, I have 6800 here. And I'm going to subtract 3600 from it. And it's possible, so I will start now. Three thousand six hundred, yeah, it's uh, still possible. try in another way. No, first 68 of course. Uh, since I know I would have 3600 here, maybe I should place 36 here. No, oh, sorry, 68. The dividend, like this. The dividend. now when I try it will be less than zero as you can hear get a negative one here so I go back I shift See, this is 680, 
3,600 than 3,600 so I shift again and see this is 6,800 and I think I can subtract 3,600 from that so I try and now it's 3,200, so it's less than 3,600. So I stop and I shift to position 5 now. And then I have 32,000. So 3,600 will fit quite many times into this number. Now it's 3,200 again. So it's less than 3,600, so I stop, I shift to position 4, and then I have 320,000 again. Uh, sorry, 32,000 again. Yeah, you can actually just see, because of this, I wish I had a display here that type of model, but if you consider here, the end of the number here, then you can follow it here and see how many zeros you will count in the, in this part. So 32,000, I will continue subtracting until it gets less than 3,000. 600. Three thousand two hundred again. So I shift, but I can already see a pattern here. So it will be um, yeah. What happened now with the decimals? Uh, my starting point was uh, not 11 digits. It was because I moved it two steps to the right, so then I had nine digits here, didn't I? Minus two would be seven. So it should be seven decimals here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Between the two first zeros. So I didn't need this one actually. Zero point zero one eight eight and the eights will continue. And uh, I'll write it here. Zero point zero eight one eight eight. So, I should do the same now with the uh, longitude coordinates as well. So, 9 divided by 60. I wasn't actually aware of the positions, where to put the positions when you have um, a dividend and a divisor with different length, different amount of numbers. So I think now I will do the same. I will have the 9 here on position, not all the way 
to the left and then I will add 9 here and then I will clear the counter and I will subtract 60 from 9 decimal there um, 10 decimals here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 oh, sorry, 11 decimals here and um, 1, 2, 3, 4 decimals here 11 minus 4 is 7 again So the decimal point will be here. So nine and subtract sixty, it's not possible. Ninety and subtract sixty is possible. But thirty subtract sixty is not possible. 300 and subtract 60 is possible. Now it's actually 60. So it's not less than 60. So I can do it one more time. And it's clear. It's zero here. And the result is 0 0.15. Seven plus zero point fifteen plus twenty six divided by three thousand six hundred. start to make room for the largest number in the division which is in this case the divisor 3600 but uh, the um, dividend will be 26 so I will start 26 here at place number 4 3,600 here's the decimal Six hundred from twenty six, no point to try. Next step to uh, three thousand six hundred from two hundred sixty, still can't do that. Three thousand six hundred from two thousand six hundred, still not possible. But twenty six thousand. 3,600 from 26,000. I can do that a couple of times. So let's start. Four thousand four hundred. One more. Eight hundred is the remainder. 
it's less than 3600 so I'll shift and I get 8000 and I will do some subtractions now subtract 3600 from 8000 800 is the remainder again I will repeat 3600 subtract subtracted from 8,000 and it's a pattern as you can see I always get 800 as a remainder so the result will be 0 division for now. That fits good. I shift this one to the left again. Um, yeah, starting from the right. I don't know, maybe I mix it up sometimes when I call it shift to left or shift to right. But yeah, you see, this carriage is shifted to as long to the left as possible. So I can do addition thirty-eight plus zero point eight three three plus zero point zero eight zero one eight eight eight. Let's do this with four decimals. This addition one, two, three, four. Zero, zero, zero. Add to the main register. Thirty-eight point zero 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 plus zero point eight three three three. I'm adding. Plus zero point zero one of this distance measured in uh, still in degrees but with the decimal number instead of the degrees minutes and um, seconds form Sorry, it is not the distance, it's the coordinates for not for south. I mean for the parallels. And I have to do the same with the coordinates for the uh, lat longitude, latitude, longitude. I uh, will do this in four decimals as well. Z 
0.1 plus 0 0.15 0 0.15 is the result but then I also have to add 0 0.00 0.072 and the result is as you can see 7.1572 west and now it's finally time to calculate the distance between these two points, these two coordinates. No. I'm sorry, I'm mixing this up all the time. This is actually the distance, but the distance in only latitude and it's like separated uh, the distance between the two points in in south north south direction and the distance in east west how it differs in east west so yeah, I can use this little sketch here to show you what I'm going to do next, because this is uh, perpendicular, 90 degrees, this cross here, and these values are calculated in either south-north or west-east. But the point is uh, to the south and to the west. So, the real distance is between these two points, and then I can consider, consider this length here of the per, uh, perpendicular rectangle, sorry, triangle, is the value 38.8521 degrees, and... Um, this length here, this length of the triangle is 7.1572 and uh, when I know these values I can calculate this using Pythagoras theorem theorem saying that A2 plus B2 is C2 This is our A, this is our B and we want to know C So if A2 plus B2 is C2, what is C? C is plus or minus, but not minus in this case because it's a distance, square root of A2 plus B2. So after this calculation, I will know how long this distance is in the unit degrees. So now it's actually time for some multiplication for the first time in this video. A2 has to be calculated and B2. So this number squared and this one and uh, I will uh, only do the multiplication with two decimals. So I will square this number, that's the same as multiplying it with itself. So let's 
let's start with this one. 38.85 times 38.85. a four digit number so in multiplication you have the multi what is it called one is called the multiplier one is called the multiplicand this is a multiplicand the number that or the the amount that I start with three three thousand eight hundred eighty five but yeah it's uh, two decimals so thirty eight point eighty five and then I'm gonna multiply it by itself and uh, multiplication is the same as repeated addition so I will add thirty eight point eighty five well now I just done it once it transferred here from the input register to the main register but actually it's a one here um, in the count register and it means that I have added it one time and it's also the same as saying I have multiplied it by 1. And uh, if I don't change any settings here, I still have the input number, the multiplicand 3885 or 38.85. Now I have added it to itself, so I have doubled it. 77.70 um, and it's the same as uh, multiply it two times this is the number of times I will add it so it's addition and this is the number of times I have added it and this is the multiplier the other factor of the multiplication so I want to have because the result will be here when I'm finished but and I know what the multiplier is it's 38.83 sorry 38.85 So now I have just uh, uh, multiplied it by 2, but I want to have the number 38.85 here at the end. So I need to rotate this one 3885 times. But with this machine you don't need to do that. You can... Um, there's, there are like shortcuts. Let's go back to just uh, one multiplication. Our starting point, 38.85 and 1 here. I will start by multiplying this with 5. Then I shift the carriage to the right and multiply it by 80 and then shift again multiply it by 800 and shift it a fourth time and multiply it by 3000 then I will get the result so it will not be 3885 operations so I have one I have already have one so I need uh, four more be before I have the number five here This is uh, 3885 
times 5. And I'm finished with those digits, and now to the tens at position 2. How many tens do I want? Yeah, 8. If you multiply a um, number with two decimals with another number with two decimals, you have to add the decimals. So the re I know that the result will have four decimals. So I should have done that before I started. And uh, now let's move to the thousands, no, the hundreds. There will be eight of these as well. Eight hundred eighty five, and the last one for the thousands. I have to turn the crank three times. So I still haven't changed the input settings one single time. It was just the same number all the time. And uh, here should the decimal pointer be. So 38 point 85 times that number, um, 38 point 85 times is uh, 1005 09.3225 That's A2 And then to B2 7.5 times 7.15 that is 7.15 squared the wrong number. 15 is here. 7.15 one time and um, I know the result will have four decimals because I will multiply it by 7.15. So here I want 715. How will I do that? Well, I will not crank it 715 times. I will do, I will have my 5 here, and 1 there, and 7 there. And I don't touch these. They will be the same all the time. Now I have multiplied it by 5. Oh yeah, 
0 0.15 and now it's multiplied by itself 7.15 times 0 0.15 is 51.1225 sorry I was a bit inaccurate here I should probably have taken the value 7.16 um, if I when I took only two decimals, so I will do it again. Seven sixteen point seven times 7.16 and the result is 51.2656 that's B2 and next step will be to add these Yeah, we want A2 plus B2. So it's time for addition again. Decimals. Hmm. This one. It's not there. One five zero nine three two two five. There you have it. And I will add fifty one point two six five six like this. I think something got wrong. much easier if I had a display so I could see these numbers while I'm set to the setup. So I understand that later models had that feature. The 
This is 1560.5881. And now I will take the square root of this. I will not consider all these decimals, so I will do the square root of 1561. be our C. This length, this distance in degrees unit. So, square root. I have only seen one example of square root on YouTube and it was quite difficult to see how they actually did it. I've done some practicing, and now let's see if I can do a square root here. Square root is a repeated uh, division, in a way. So you should have it all to the right, the carriage here. And um, this machine will follow the steps um, as you do if you do like long division but with the square root, there is an algorithm for square roots, you can do it by hand even though it's not used so much. I didn't learn it in school. Uh, I have taken a look at it now and it's quite fun actually um, to see that it works. You can, you can calculate square root by hand using a bit of something similar to long division but a bit more advanced I guess or more steps um, let's see the thing is that you have to be very very careful about the number of decimals let's see if I remember now how to do it um, Start here with one five six one. No, yeah, then I have it here, the first four dig digits here in the main register, and I'm on position eight here. That's good. So I add the number I want to take the square root of here. And I clear. Yes, no more addition, now it's division. And um, the idea of taking a square root of something that was quite fascinating to realize when I saw that, when I watched that video I told you about is that a square root this is if this is one the length one then the square root is one times one it's one if the length is two and you take a square you make you make the length into a square two dimensions so this length is also 2, then the square, I mean, um, this is not the square root, this is the square root, the, the length, the distance, and uh, the number itself is uh, the area, you can see it as the area, the the number squared. One point. Uh, uh, it's not so visible when you use one, but when you, when you use two, two. And the power of two is two times two is four. So the area is four. You can count. Yeah, you knew that this this was one value of one, even in the area. So it's one. 
for, if we can see here. Um, if you take the square of 3, you have the length 3. 3 and the power of 2 is 3 times 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the square of 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, is 16. continue with all the perfect squares. And you have the length 5 and you square it. Square it. 5 squared is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, I should have done it. count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And um, So going from 4 squared to 5 squared, we'll add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It will add 9 to the number of 4 squared. When you went from 3 squared to 4 squared, you added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. squares at the same the same uh, area and when you went from 2 squared to 3 squared you added 1 2 3 4 5 of this 1 squared and when you went from 1 squared to 2 squared, you added 3. And when you went from nothing to 1 squared, you added 1. I guess you could say. So, you can go from a square to the next square that exists. Um, when it's about uh, integers like this, uh, by adding an uneven number. So first you add 1, then you add 3, and then you add 5, and 7, and 9. And this will continue. Next time you will have to add 11 to go from uh, 5 squared to 6 squared. That is, when you go from 25 to 36, you add 11, and so on. When you take the square root, you go backwards. So, square root of 25, you want to find 5. Maybe I should show you 25, square root of 25 before I start. Also for me to practice a bit. 25 clear t 
to 25. I want to, instead of adding, when you go from a, a smaller square to a bigger one, you add these odd numbers. So when you go from a number that you want to, but you want to go to, you want to subtract, sub subtract something because you all you can do on this machine is subtracting um, or add that's the basic operations but if you have 25 I want to find 5 you can start by subtracting you want to get rid of all these extra rows that ma makes it into a square. If you take 25 minus 9, you will have 60. If you then continue to subtract 7 from 16, you, can, you have this shape and you continue um, subtracting 7, then you get 9 left, and you subtract 5, all you have left now is 4, mm. and you subtract 3, and you get 1, but you don't want 1, you want 5. So after each time you have subtracted these, these uh, odd numbers, you first do the operation, you get 16. But for each time you have to add 1 as well. So you add 1 and have 16. Uh, sorry, 70. Then you subtract 9. You subtract, you subtract 7 from 17, you get 10. And you add 1, you get 11. Then you subtract 5 from 11. And you get 6. You add 1, you get 7. From 7, you subtract 3. Six, five, four, and you add one, and you get five. Yeah, that's how you do it. So if you just subtract in this pattern all the time, you always get to one. But if you for each operation also add one, only one, because that's a counter, you can say. You count how many times you do this. One, two, three, four. You do it four times when you start at five squared. You do one, two, three, four operations. So the counter will be plus four when you have ended. And you, you, you end with one. If you wouldn't do that extra addition, you would end with one. But since you add four, you get five. And that's the result. That's how it works. So 25. Let's see that there is one, two, I think that the decimals should always be in pairs. So one, one, two, one, two. This, this is not six, five, four, three. Yeah, this is even pairs. 2, 5 is here, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is here. So if I now st 
start and I will do it uh, I don't know exactly how but, um, how many times operations I have to do so I can't I can't start with the highest number because I don't know which is the highest number that's what I'm kind of looking for so I will start instead with the lowest number and subtract this one and add one I subtract 1 from 25. That is my first step. Twenty-four. Now I think as I did in the division with the remainder. I want to subtract 3 in the next step. I only made this step now. Now go to this step. I want to subtract 3 from 24. That's totally possible. Now I want to subtract 5 from... No, 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 sorry. I forgot something. it says here. Uh, I'm still here it's still more than seven so I can try one more. The next step and it's even it's uh, zero here and it's five there in the counter register. I did this five times and uh, I didn't have to add anything Because, um, yeah, the number you would reach here after taking away all, all these squares is not the number of operations. Um, I don't know. Actually, I'm not sure how it works. But let's try another number. squared for example because that's an irrational number it will continue with a lot of uh, decimals and I will show you the algorithm so 10 start to subtract 1 from 9 from 10 and I can still subtract 3 from 9 I can still subtract 5 from 6 see now I can't subtract 7 my next step will be trying to subtract 7 from 1, but it's not possible, so I stop. And now I have to add 1. I'm not completely sure why, but it has something to do with this addition, I think. I have to add 1, and I have to shift the carriage one step. So the remainder was 1. Now the remainder is not 10 it's 100 because I always go two decimals when it's about squares so uh, this one I will keep at this position because now I leave the this uh, yeah, this position and now I go into the 
next decimal or next uh, uh, I decrease it with a, a tenth so 100 and I'll start with trying to subtract one but I still have this one here now it says 39 in the remainder I can okay I think That means I need to stop because 61 is uh, more than 39. I can't subtract 63, for example, from 39. So instead, I will stop and I will add one so it, it will get into the two value here. And shift. Now I have three thousand nine hundred and I'm here. As you can see, maybe I can have this one helping me to remember. And here I have six hundred and twenty one start. 621 subtracting I subtract 3 and this also but I put this put it to the position 3 and to position 5 to position 7 Still larger here, position nine, seven, seven, five is here, in the main register, and six, two, nine is here. So I still can subtract six, two, three from this number. So then I have to go to eleven, the next um, odd number. Do like this one and put this one one step like 10 11 and I subtract once again 144 it's less than 631 so I can't go on I will stop but for then I need to add Uh, this just as the last step I'm not completely sure why but that's how you do it and I shift now it's this one and the number is the remainder was 144 and I add two zeros it gets 14,400 and here it's 6,320 one my first subtraction three my second subtraction if it's possible eight thousand seventy nine six thousand three hundred twenty three yes if possible and now 1,756 is my remainder because I can't subtract 6,320 something starting with that and still get a positive result so I'll stop here for now and add one step on this one just one more 
just room for one more decimal here, so I will do that one too. Shift this here. 175,600 is my value here. And uh, 63,000 something. So I guess it would be maybe five or something here. Five times I can do the subtraction. Let's see. With, start with one. Three. This is what happens when you do go too far with the subtractions or in the division and also in in uh, the square root because it is division I'm doing. I couldn't do a five. So I have to stop at three and then one step. I don't know why I thought I could do five subtractions. I could only do two of them. So square root of 10. This is, has nothing to do with the calculation, but it was an example. It's 3.1622. Something. the square root of 1561 in the same way. There are two decimals here, that's good. They should always be in pairs. And let's clear the counter. Put the decimal here. And uh, set all these to zero and start the subtraction with one at this position. to go on forever. That, that's not how I will do it. Hmm. I wonder how to think about this, uh, these um, decimals here. I'm not sure. It's not like in division. I can't can't start by subtracting just one and then three, then I would never get to this high number. If I start here then, with one. Ah, okay. I can't start here, I think, because then I have odd number of decimals, one, two, three, four, five decimals, and that's not possible in calculating square root, so I will start here. And uh, subtracting one from 15. I think that could be a good start. And then three. Five I have six hundred I have six and I want to subtract seven from six and it's not possible. 
So I have to stop at 5. I have to put this to 6. I add 1. I shift this one to one step to the left. And I continue with the next wheel. Now the number is 661. And I have to see how many times 60 something fits into that. How many times I can subtract 60, starting with 61. And now 3. subtract from 405, that's still possible. Now I will subtract 11, so I have to shift this one step one tenth more, and then this one to back to 1, and I subtract, subtract it from 3 at the end of the 36. I subtract 13, or 73 from 265, 75 from 192, still possible, 77 from 117, still possible. I can subtract 77 from 170 without passing 0. Now I want to try 79, but I can't subtract 79 from 40. So I will not do that. Instead, I will just go one step forward with this one, and I will shift. Two digits more four thousand here in the remainder part and uh, seven hundred eighty something in the input. Start with one three. subtract 780 something from 1651 yes so 7 can I subtract 78 780 something from 864 yes at least one time so Can I subtract 780 something from 75? No. But I still have, then I have to stop here, but I still have to move this forward one step to 10, so it will be 0, and this one will be one step here to 9. And I shift one step next position and two more decimals and I'm at this lever now I have the remainder part 7500 zero, zero. and here it's 7900 oh, oh. which means I cannot do anything in this step I can't subtract 7,900 from 7,500, so I just have to say that I'm finished and put this one step, this last addition step.
and next position here, the last one. I have 750,000 and the remainder part. And I can want to see how many times I can subtract 79,000 something. That is possible a couple of times, I guess. So I start with one. Five, seven, nine, seven, seventy thousand something and Three hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, and now I want to try. Yeah, eleven, of course. Like that, and put push this one step forward. And thirteen. And fifteen. Still have a high number here, 117. Three, what does it say? 38,829. It's less than 79,027. So I stop there. If I will go, okay, let's go one step. I think this will sound, yeah. Redo, and last step is just to put this one step forward, not two. So this is uh, still the remainder, uh, but here I have the square root and I'm not sure how the decimal thing works when it's square roots actually. But the number is, what is it? Three, nine, five, zero, nine. And then I couldn't calculate anymore. Should be thirty nine point five oh nine something thirty nine point fifty one. Let me check. Thirty-nine fifty-one. I do a multiplication check. Now. fifteen sixty one and since it was an abbreviation it was not exactly thirty nine point fifty one there was a lot of decimals here it also it didn't became turned out uh, 
a perfect square. But, uh, 39.51 uh, squared is approximately 1561. By the way, I'm sorry I couldn't really explain exactly how this works and how how it how you can think in this way when you calculate the square root there. But one thing I forgot to mention was that um, every square root can be built up like this. Like you start with uh, the first uh, odd integer and then you take all the you add the next odd integer and you add the next and the next. So for example, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 is 25, is 5 squared. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 operations. This is 16, this is 21, this is 24, and this is 25. And if you only take this, you have 7.5, that's uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, so there you have 4 squared. So that's how you can build up all the even squares, or perfect squares like that. So I guess that's how you can then when you already have the square and want to find the square root, you can subtract instead of adding. Uh, and you don't know up to which odd number you will subtract, so you just start with the first one and then you continue. But now we have 1561, or 1561. The distance we were looking for, or I was looking for, uh, and uh, the unit is still in degrees. So to me it doesn't say so much about, I can't really see in front of me how far it is, only by seeing the number of degrees. So I will convert this now into kilometers and miles because I guess uh, one of those units will be more you will be more familiar with that those units one of those units so let's start with the uh, converted into um, into kilometers then there's a formula you take the degrees value times one 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 that will give you an approximation of kilometers. So time for multiplication again. Move this to the left and clear. Position two and uh, add ten more seventeen thousand one hundred seventy one and I move the carriage to the right and add one hundred more of this number. So one thousand five hundred sixty. 1 times 111 is 1, there are no decimals here so 
173,271 kilometers. Oh, sorry. Um, it, it is uh, this value, of course. Um, 39.51 times 1 and then um, this was <laughs> the number we were starting from. So. Yeah, I'm mixing up a lot of things here, but I guess it, it's supposed to be a long video, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, 39.51 times 11. What will this give? Then it's two decimals. So it will be two decimals in the answer as well, in the result. I forgot to move the carriage all the way to the left, as you can see, but I don't worry about that because I can only start here and we will have two more decimals, two more zeros, it doesn't matter. So I will write 111 at this position instead. Now, move the carriage and do the tens. Move the carriage again and do the hundreds. So now one no, thirty nine point fifty five times one hundred and eleven is uh, four thousand three hundred eighty five point six one. Keep the number here, only clear this part. This time I will move the carriage all the way to the left. And uh, I will calculate how many miles 39.51 degrees is. So I will multiply by 69. Then I will get an approximation for miles here. And as you might guess, I can turn this crank first nine times, then shift and turn it six more times. That would be 15 times I need to rotate this one but there's actually a shortcut that was quite smart when I saw it in one of the videos I watched it's um, moving it all the way to third position in the beginning and uh, multiply this with um, 100 that's more than 69 but let's see what, what you can do Now, uh, 39.51 is uh, multiplied by 100 and you get 3951. Then you can move back to position 2, the tens, and you can subtract 30. I want to subtract. So I had, uh, now I have 100 of this number, but now I want to subtract 30 of those. And then I rotate in a counterclockwise direction three times. You see, it's the red here, the counter. So 
so now it's multiplied by 70 and I can move to the first position the position to the right the smallest number the zeros or I don't know exactly how to what to call them the integers or the 10 in the power of minus 1 perhaps um, then I just need to subtract one more of this number then I have multiplied it by 69 even though it says 131 or it says actually 100 and then red digits 31 so it, it should be read 100 minus 31 and that is 69 and the result is here 2726.19 miles I actually did a check on Google measure this this distance from Chui to Parque Nacional do Monte Roraima and uh, when I did that, as accurate as I could, I got this result in kilometers. And in miles. I forgot to tell you one thing about the, the unit degrees. Actually, it's not totally reliable to just convert it to kilometers because the degrees are changing depending on where on Earth they are. So I guess closer to the poles, nor North Pole and South Pole, the, the very extreme um, parallels. So Upside, uh, it it differs a lot. One degree there is, uh, especially longitude degrees, are very narrow there because they go in like this, and they're, they are they have a focal point on, on the pole, so uh, close to the equator they have this. Um, distance and then close to the poles they have very narrow distance compared to at the equator uh, when it comes to the parallels they are more evenly distributed so to just have a formula that converts degrees to kilometers is not just such a good idea if you want to be super accurate and especially if you want to measure distance far to the north or far to the south on on the earth but in this case it was over the equator it was quite a lot in the yeah, the middle of the earth or how to say it uh, so it was not so far this um, calculation that I made with this pinwheel calculator and the uh, result from Google Maps Let's check the, the difference between these, how much it differs, the result. So first, 4385.61 four minus 
six one. Two thousand seven hundred twenty six point nineteen miles subtracted by two seven two two point eight four. was 3.35 so it differed 3.63 kilometers my calculation compared to Google's the values on Google Maps and uh, or 3.35 miles So, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching, listening. I hope you found it relaxing and also interesting. Thank mm -hmm. you.